Hey there, Nudie Scholars. I'm Dr. Marquette, and my channel is all about helping you graduate with your doctorate. Is doctoral residency on your horizon? Well, I have assembled some of the strongest residency faculty to help you with seven ideas to make sure that you have the most productive residency week possible. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Wayne Schmidt. I am the program chair of the EDD degrees. I am also the co-director of, of residency along with Dr. Jim Hadley. Hi, I'm Dr. Tina Harshman. I am a dissertation chair and I am a full-time residency instructor. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Twyla Williams-Damon. I am a dissertation chair, I'm an IRB specialist, and a residency instructor. Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Tenille, and I want to give you a couple of tips to be successful at residency. Hi, my name is Dr. Christine Quaid and I teach here at residency. Hello, my name is Dr. Jason Ward and I've been chairing a doctoral learners going on about 20 years. My name is Dr. Brianna Nicholson, I'm a chair. Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy Verdier. I have a few tips for you on preparing for residency. Hi, I'm Joanne. I am the residency librarian and I'm here to support you guys to find the literature that you need to help get you through that residency process and, and the entire doctoral process. Okay, so what can you do to get ready for residency? Make sure that you are doing what you need to do to take care of you while you are taking care of your study. Be sure you come with a good pair of headphones that maybe even those noise blockers, sound blockers, get your go to a nice place music or whether, whether you're listening to waves crashing, get something that keeps the outside noise out and keeps you concentrated. You're really going to like having those. Make sure you're eating right, drinking plenty of water. It does get rather hot. It may be very hot outside, but in the classroom you will freeze. So bring a sweater, a jacket, shawl, whatever, uh, because I've watched people go out and purchase blankets. So just think about that one. I know this is kind of a controversial topic. We recommend if you have a family, don't bring them. Families tend to interfere with with the students studying at night. This is a week for you to focus on residency. So focus during the day, take a little break, come back, focus at night. So I always make sure I tell my students, especially on the first or second day coming in from long days of travel, you are going to have a lot of time to work on your dissertation during residency. Please don't stay up until two o'clock in the morning, crunching things, trying to put them together. The more fatigued you are, uh, the more muddled the things that you put together may become. So just make sure that you're getting the rest you need. You are doing what you need to do to take care of you while you are taking care of your study. Residency is an opportunity for you to network. Uh, so get to know fellow learners, get to know the faculty. You will meet a lot of colleagues, so you want to connect in with those people just because your family will never understand the struggle that you are going through to write a dissertation. But the people that are on a similar journey will. Because they are indeed going to have some type of an impact on where you go with your research. It's a really good idea to make connections with peers in your class. Don't just leave the classroom and go to your room. Go and spend some time in some type of a social activity. Because you're going to be on this journey for a while and so making those connections and networking while you're at residency and then maintaining, maintaining contact with them throughout your dissertation journey will be a great source of support for you. A couple of things that you need to keep in mind is that there is a specific vocabulary that is associated with academic research. First of all, you should know the difference between qualitative research and quantitative research. So quantitative is going to be mostly working with numbers, um, instruments that are valid and reliable, and more of a, of a hard data. Our qualitative research is more of your words, interviews, um, open-ended questionnaires. Both very important research methods, but a lot of different facets for each. Um, another one that we see is not knowing the specific difference between methodology and design. Remember, methodology is always quantitative, qualitative, 
or mixed methods. Research design falls within each of those. So quantitative, you're gonna have correlational, you're gonna have comparative, you're gonna have ex post facto. We have non-experimental and experimental designs. And then for qualitative methodology, we have qualitative descriptive, we have case studies, phenomenology, and we have narrative studies. So definitely some differences there. If somebody asks you what your research design is, you can't say I'm doing a qualitative study. If somebody asks you what your methodology is, you can't say I'm doing a case study because that's a research design. Empirical research is research in which data was actually collected during a study. A lot of times with those survey reviews or lit reviews, they are reviewing the literature on data that has already been collected. They did not collect any new data that adds to the significance of the body of literature that's already out there. Definitions are not empirical. Feasibility is a big deal. You need to be able to define it. Feasibility is basically, are you able to do the study? What do you need to do the study? And what are some of the things that you may come across as you are dealing with putting your study together? You're also gonna have an opportunity to talk to our institutional review board. So as an IRB specialist, uh, I am the supervisor for IRB here, there's some other items that you need to think about. First of all, feasibility. We deal with this all the time. Is your study feasible? Um, can you actually get to the population that you are uh, assuming that you will get to? Can you acquire the number of participants that you need to get? These are all feasibility issues uh, that you need to think about. Attitude is very important. Everybody has their own journey and everybody travels at their own rate. Don't compare yourself to other people. It's really important to remember, life happens. Don't compare yourself to somebody who it took seven years or somebody else did it in three or four. Life happens differently for you than it happens for me. But everybody's journey is completely unique. Be kind to yourself and don't be looking at the person next to you, behind you, or ahead of you. Walk your own journey. Your journey is going to take you as long as your journey takes you. Also, throw away this notion that you have to get an A in every single class. You know what they call somebody with a 3.0 GPA that earned their doctorate, right? Doctor. So keep that in mind as you move forward uh, because ultimately nobody is ever going to ask you what your GPA was when you were in your doctoral work program. Understand that change is a natural part of this process. We are only opinion until you get your chair and your methodologist. And then even that will change when you get to AQR. dive into this process as an opportunity to learn from those that are sitting around you, your peers, your residency faculty, um, and really just understand that change is natural, change is going to happen, and welcome and embrace it. We're here for you to facilitate you building this and doing this. We want to make sure that we're getting you aligned. We need to make sure that our particular topic is coming from the literature itself. Don't just read the abstract of the study. Read the entire study. Oftentimes students come and they are just so excited and passionate about a particular subject matter, but you can't find it in the research. So without that, you do not have a dissertation. You do not, but you can't find it in the research. So without that, you do not have a dissertation. You do not. Oh, oh. It, the research has to drive your study, and you need to understand that before you get here. When you learn to ride a bicycle, you fall over. You, you hurt yourself, you scrape your leg, you get up, and you try it again. Even if you don't understand, try it anyway. So don't be afraid of making a mistake. We are here to help you. We will give you guidance. But we're not going to do it for you. We're not here to do it for you. So I'm not going to tell you how many people need to be in your study. I'm not going to tell you what you should study and I'm not going to tell you how you should do it. But I'm going to try to give you the tools to help you do it correctly. Just be prepared to really take in the feedback right away. The feedback from your instructors is not to cause a barrier. It is there to give you uh, their expertise to help the process. Don't take it personally. Uh, we're here to give you feedback to advance your study. You may be at one level and we need to push you to the next level. So be open to our feedback. 
uh, be open to what we give you and be open to revising or refining your subject matter so that it can be a really solid dissertation that you can be proud of. Probably the most important thing you can do is read what is given you. So you need to be looking at your PowerPoint. Read the PowerPoints before you get here. Please review all the resources. They're there for a reason and you need to conduct due diligence so that when you get in class you're prepared and ready to go and that you're not behind the gate once you get here. You're going to be given materials, PowerPoints. Download course materials or download the PowerPoints from Monday morning. Don't stop at downloading, read them. Take a look at the templates, take a look at everything. That preparation is really important because we know that many of you are traveling a long way to be here. We want you to be able to get the best out of your experience. And if I'm sitting here talking about something that you haven't even looked at yet, that's going to change what you would absorb from the session. So please make sure you read all of those. Make sure that you come with your problem space articles clearly identified. And know how to articulate it. All in all, it needs to be from within five years of your dissertation publication date. Everything you do has to be supported by literature. I'm here at residency all the way through Thursday, you guys can make a 15 minute appointment with me and we can sit down, talk about what you need and get you what you need to move you forward. And we're here at the library to help you with that. So for theoretical foundations or conceptual framework, always take a look at the literature that you have in front of you because sometimes you're going to find that the theory is actually there. It's the one that the researchers are already using. Quantitative researchers, if you have your instrumentation picked out, your surveys, often there is a theory that's associated with that and for alignment purposes we really prefer that that's what you use. Quantitative researchers, each variable needs to be covered by a theory. Make sure that you have a theory identified as well that aligns with your topic that is going to clearly undergird your study. You can do it as simply as doing a Google search and putting in whatever you think the theory might be along with the term theory behind it and see what happens. So a lot of times Google will take you directly to the theory okay, and the theorist. Qualitative researchers, one theory is great, two theories are good. Basically, if you have too many theories, then you are looking at things through different lenses. So you're piling different pairs of glasses on your eyes. The more you put on, the blurrier things get. So you wanna make sure that you are just looking clearly through what you need as far as theoretical foundation. After residency, you can always call the library and we would be happy to help you anytime we're there seven days a week. We hope you have a great residency. Good luck and I hope you enjoy your dissertation journey. It's a great place to be. And you'll say, wow, that was an extraordinary experience. Was I right? Isn't that a fantastic group of faculty? I am so grateful to work with such a kind and knowledgeable group of colleagues whom I consider friends. Let us know in the comments what advice was most meaningful to you. Please make sure to check out the description box below for resource recommendations and also visit our new website for short blog posts that will help you along in your doctoral journey. Also, consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Let me help you get to graduation. God bless.